Good morning, good morning, everyone. Once again, it's so great to be here on this uh, beautiful day with you. Another day for us to uh, be in God's presence and a day for us to enjoy one another and enjoy uh, life together in God's house, uh, God's people, and uh, with God's Word. And that's where we want to begin here, the fourth day of the new year. So we'll be in Psalm 4 as we've taken over our new um, reading list from the Navigators. And uh, I want to begin. Psalm number 4, reading from the New Living Translation. Again, uh, a good translation that uh, is easy to read and easy to understand. Not the most word-for-word -word from the original languages, but um, does a good job communicating ideas, I think. A Psalm of David to be accompanied by stringed instruments. We'll pass on the strings today. Answer me when I call to you, O God, who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? You can be sure of this. The Lord will set apart, or the Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord. Many people say, who will show us better times? Let your face smile on us, Lord. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Let's join in prayer with the psalmist David and give God thanks that uh, he watches over us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you <clears throat> that in you we can have rest, that we can have peace, and that we, Lord God, can know that you are the one who protects us, that you are the one who will uh, be with us when others come against us. Uh, Lord, help us to stand with you and to stand for you in our generation. Lord, you have called us to yourself for a reason. We know it. We acknowledge it. I pray, Lord God, that each one of us would um, walk that path of holiness that you call us to um, with devotion, that we might know you more, uh, that we might live for you more, and that we might uh, help bring forth your kingdom here on earth. That's our prayer this day in Christ's name. Amen. Well, our reading in Genesis, um, only two chapters today. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of family names. Good morning, everybody on the on the call this morning. Maria and uh, Grace and Walt and some others who haven't signed in. Um, it's good to good to know that uh, we can be together. The descendants of the first family, chapter ten. This is the accounts of the families of Shem, Ham, Japheth, the three sons of Noah. Many children were born to them after the great flood. Um, the first family after the flood, I should say, for sure. The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, Tiras. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Ripha, Togarma. The descendants of Javan were Elishcha, Tarshish, Kitam, Rodanim. The descendants became the seafaring peoples that spread out to various lands, each identified by his own language, clan, and identity. Hang on to that thought. Uh, the descendants who became seafaring peoples and spread out to various lands. When we get to the next chapter, that is a theme that uh, weighs and factors into uh, the Tower of Babel. The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mitzrayim, Put, and Canaan. The descendants of Cush were Sheba, Havilah, Sabbath, Ra'ama, 
Sabteka, the descendants of Rama, were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became proverbial. People would say, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia, with the cities of Babylon, Erich, Akkad, and Kalne. From there, he expanded his territory to Assyria, building the cities of Nineveh, Rehoboth-ir, Kala, and Resen, the great city located between Nineveh and Kala. Mitzrayim was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Lahabites, <coughs> Naphtulites, Parushites, Kalushushites, the Kephthorites, and who be, from whom the Philistines came. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon and the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was the ancestor of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvites, Semarites, and the Hamathites. The Canaanite clan spread, eventually spread out, and the territory of Canaan extended from Sidon in the north to Gerar and Gaza in the south, and east as far as Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim near Lasha. These were the descendants of Ham, identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. The descendants of Shem. Sons were also born to Shem, the older brother of Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the descendants of Eber. The descendants of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Arphachad, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Aram were Uz, Chul, Gether, and Mash. Arphahad was the father of Shila, and Shila was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons, the first named Peleg, which means division, for during his lifetime the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the ancestor of Almadad, Shelefa, Hazmarvarf, sorry, Cherar, Hadoram, Usal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. The territory they occupied extended from Misha all the way to Sephar in the eastern mountains. These were the descendants of Shem, identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. These are the clans that descended from Noah's sons, arranged by nation according to their lines of descent. All the nations of the earth descended from these clans after the great flood. Just want to scroll back up and, and pick out one name, and that is here in verse 21, uh, Eber. It uh, has been um, told to me that Eber um, is the individual whose name um, is the foundation for the word Hebrews. He Eber would have been like the, the way um, it would be translated in the Hebrew. Um, and uh, that's how the Hebrews got their name. But here in chapter 11, we get to the Tower of Babel, a very interesting um, scene in uh, the early world. At one time, all the peoples of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. And again, the translation, uh, New Living Translation, kind of fills in the blanks with some of the, um, the Hebrew words and, and locations that they tell us what, what we understand it to mean. Um, so they connect the dots, if you will. The people began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower that the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. 
In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world, and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages. In this way, he scattered them all over the world. It's been a lot of uh, conversation about this scene in the early history of humankind. Um, you know, and um, some of the commentators have a lot of good things to say. I don't think anybody really knows exactly um, what the meaning of this is, other than to say that it was not God's plan that the people would bunch together, live in a city, and um, live apart from him. Um, there is a sense that what is going on here is an independence on the part of the people, a setting themselves up in such a way that they don't really need God Almighty in their lives. God gave the command to go into the world, to multiply, and to subdue the earth, and to spread out, basically. And uh, that's why I made that comment um, in chapter 10 about the people um, being seafaring and spreading out throughout the world. That was God's plan, not what was going on in Babel. Um, of course, Bab Babylon, um, this region that we're talking about right here, becomes something of a byword um, all the way through the Bible. Babylon is um, the world system that really sets itself against the ways of God. And uh, we, we understand that that's what was happening here in chapter 11 um, in Genesis. The people were setting themselves up against the Lord God Almighty and uh, that was not God's plan at all. So I want to um, leave the reading off there. Um, I encourage everybody, if you're um, participating in this read through the Bible, um, to uh, read the rest of chapter 11, the descendants, the line of uh, Shem to Abram. Abram uh, picks up the story tomorrow in chapter 12. But I want to read another one of those Puritan prayers and to read it like a prayer. And I'll put it up on the screen so that you can read along with me. Um, it is, I think, a, just a, a very beautiful prayer that reminds us of how we ought to approach God. So l let's pray. Holy Father, I have sinned times without number and been guilty of pride and unbelief of failure to find thy mind in thy word, of neglect to seek thee in my daily life. My transgressions and shortcomings present me with a list of accusations, but I bless thee that they will not stand against me, for all have been laid on Christ. Go on to subdue my corruptions and grant me grace to live above them. Let not the passions of the flesh nor lustings of the mind bring my spirit into subjection, but do thou rule over me in liberty and power. I thank thee that many of my prayers have been refused. I have asked amiss and do not have. I have prayed from lusts and have been rejected. I have longed for Egypt and have been given a wilderness. Go on with thy patient work, answering no, to my wrongful prayers, and fitting me to accept it. Purge me from every false desire, every base aspiration, everything contrary to thy rule. I thank thee for thy wisdom and thy love, for all the acts of discipline to which I am subject, for sometimes putting me into the furnace to refine my gold and remove my dross. No trial is so hard to bear as a sense of sin. If thou shouldst give me choice to live in pleasure and keep my sins, or to have them burnt away with trial, give me sanctified affliction. Deliver me from every evil habit, every accretion of former sins, everything that dims the brightness of thy grace. In me, everything that prevents me from taking delight in thee, then I shall bless thee God of Jeshurun, for helping me to be upright. Amen. 
what an intense prayer and what a telling attitude. Lord, I'd rather have refinement and trials than an easy life, a life without you in it. I say amen to that. I want to, um, again, pick up our prayer time for our brothers and sisters uh, at Open Doors. And again, we're beginning the year in the most persecuted country on the planet, and that is North Korea. We're um, challenged to pray for the network of safe houses in China that minister to North Korean believers with practical aid such as food, medicines, clothes, and Bibles. Um, North Korea, again, is uh, a country that is absolutely um, closed to the gospel. And uh, again, just to remind us where, where this is, um, I'm always shocked when I see a map to see how close to Japan um, the Korean pe peninsula, peninsula actually is. And there's North Korea sitting, obviously, to the north of South Korea. Um, but sharing a border not only with China, but also up there in the northeast with Russia. And uh, I'll just back out a little bit so we can get a, a, a bigger picture there of, of the world. And, uh, you know, we need to pray for this area. We need to pray for those believers who um, continue to strive um, to uh, practice their faith and to live um, for Christ um, in that place. Um, there are Christians on the border in China. When we think of China, we don't often think of it being a, a habitat, if you will, for Christians. But there are many, many Christians, millions of Christians, as a matter of fact, in China. And uh, they stand ready to pray with us for the people of North Korea. And through them, uh, we can help the church grow in that uh, dark, dark country. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for these brothers and sisters who risk it all for the sake of the gospel. Um, they have courage, Lord God, that we don't even understand, I think, and they are committed uh, to putting their lives on the line to see the light of your truth shine forth in that closed country of North Korea. Lord God, we do pray for the leadership of North Korea. We just pray that somehow, Lord God, you would break through, that you would uh, touch the hearts of the leaders there, that you would soften them, and that you would indeed change their hearts, Lord. Give them a heart of flesh for the heart of stone that they have. Um, bring about a, a, a groundswell of change in North Korea, that that region might come to know you, and that the light of Christ might shine there, um, because you have done a marvelous thing. Lord, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, um, once again, and certainly last but not least, perhaps, is um, our list of thanksgivings this week. Um, hopefully, most of us got uh, an email last night. Uh, Ruth Dowdy is indeed home from a short stay at the hospital. Again, she fell and hit her head on, uh, on New Year's Day and uh, injured her neck. She's home with a, uh, a collar, and uh, we'll just pray for strength for her each and every day. Um, we uh, just praise God uh, that he watches over um, his people. I do um, want to just share the news that uh, we had seen postings and had, had people call us uh, to pray for this young man, Josh, who uh, is um, an EMT in the town of Thompson. Um, Josh had pancreatitis that turned septic and uh, was taken to um, the emergency room um, ICU down at Yale. He passed away yesterday. Um, I think he was 30 or 31 years old, young man with a family. And uh, we just join the prayers uh, for the family with all those that knew Josh and, and just mourn today uh, for, for his passing. Um, just so sorry um, to see a life cut short like that. Um, but uh, we praise God for his life and for his devotion um, to um, serving in his community. And then we pray Lord, uh, that God would, would fill the void left by him and uh, that would bless the people that stand up and, and do it. Um, there's our list 
quite a number of people continue to struggle physically, but we want to uh, give God thanks that he is a deliverer and that he is indeed the one um, who can meet us uh, at the place of our of our greatest need. Again, there's the name on the screen right there, Josh Kusek, who I'm uh, sad to report did pass away from that illness. I want to pray um, for uh, Alyssa, Sherry's daughter, as she's recovering now from COVID. She uh, was tested um, to be uh, COVID-free, but uh, still needs strength in her recovery. And also for uh, Cody and Owen, um, two young people who uh, um, a young, young woman uh, was visiting on Sunday Madison with her family, folks that we've known for, for years. And uh, just pray for Cody and Owen that their hearts would be open to receive the gospel and that they might come to a place of faith. And we just uh, thank God for, for Madison and her um, willingness, her heart to share the good news um, with uh, the people in her life. So praise God for us, for all of us who have opportunities to share the good news of the gospel. I'm going to leave it there on this uh, chilly morning in January 2022. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. I look forward to being back with you today. And uh, God bless as we read through the Bible together in 2022. God be with you.